Hello and welcome to The Faking Of, the podcast where we fake our way through the behind the scenes stories of your favorite movies and favorite to hate movies. I'm your host, Nick DeRamio, the filmmaker and improv coach extraordinaire who talks us through the tale. And I have with me a very exciting guest that I am super excited to bring on for a movie that has been a huge part of both of our lives, it sounds like. So without further ado, let me introduce Ms. Jenna Sequa. Qua Qua. <laughs> yeah. Hi, thank you so much for being here. Jenny is both an artist and an extraordinary person and all around amazing close friend that I've known since oh. our golden years in college at NYU. Yes, sir. And actually, Very we cool. have gone through this process before and talked about a previous movie, but uh, this is a new episode ready for the ears of the public. And we're talking about what movie, Janae? We're doing Josie and the Pussycats, if you couldn't tell by our beautiful cat ears that we're wearing. <laughs> yes, if you're catching the video version of this podcast, then we have the ears on because otherwise you don't know that we are the punk rock prom queen, Brown Paper Magazine. <laughs> this, mm. These songs are iconic. So Jenny, we're going to take this movie through like the initial concept all the way to its premiere uh, with some mostly true facts and trivia from the IMDb page. Uh, so it all starts with a pitch. And this movie is based on Josie and the Pussycats, which are comic book characters from the like Archie comics world. So let's say that I'm a movie producer. You work at Hanna-Barbera comics or whatever, and you get in the elevator with me and you have 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds to, um, to convince me that we should make a movie based on this property. Uh, are you ready? Because you don't have much time to prepare. Five, four, three, two, ding, elevator doors close. Mm. Have you ever seen three punk rock chicks that are ready to just express themselves and fight the man in song and dance? Because I have. It's Josie and the Pussycats. Oh, yeah. Some kind of old, I don't know. Is that like the Spice Girls? We've already done that. It's not like the Spice Girls. They, um... They, uh... Oh, my floor's coming up in two seconds, so. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> now I'm like, oh shit, they're not gonna get produced. I feel like the way that they did get produced was through Archie. They were never had to pitch alone. So you think that the because there was some recognition from the Archie comics, this was, like, right. already gonna be they sort of a success? They pulled them up back in, the, back in the 50s or whenever they were made. And then for this movie specifically, I heard that they were, like, trying to play off the popularity of Green Day and Blink-182, but turn that into, like, the girls' version of it. I see. Because were you aware that this was based on a comic book when you first saw the movie? It came out in April no 11th. April 11th, 2001. So I would have been 10. What about you? Uh, yes, same. So, yeah, I remember, like, there's even a joke at one point, like, the character breaks the fourth wall, played by Missy Pyle. She's like, I'm here because yeah. I was in the comic book. And they're like, what? And she goes, Nothing. I think that's where I learned there was a comic book was, like, in the movie itself. <laughs> Me too. And then, weirdly, like, promos from, t like, um, Cartoon Network would sometimes show, like, Josie and the Pussycats, the old cartoon. And I was like... Oh, right. I get it. So, <laughs> but I never watched the cartoon. I think I do remember those Cartoon Network things. I never it saw the. It didn't capture me. Me either. I never saw the cartoon either. But when I was searching for this movie to stream yesterday, there were like a m hundred Josie and the Pussycats cartoon movies, like Josie and the Pussycats Go to Space, and I was mm -hmm. like, I would love to see it. So yes, I'm very it's intrigued. Revitalized. Um, I want to know all of that, but. I feel like one of the main defining things of this movie that caught my attention, even at a young age, was like how they kind of used product placement to a satirical level. Did you notice mm -hmm. that when you were Yeah, it reminded me of um, the Truman Show, kind of, the way they did it. Oh, yeah, because the Truman Show... Like... But those were all fictional brands. They were like, and here's right. the Cuisinart Miso Master. <laughs> yes. This was like that, only it was real, which was what was even more like 
crazy and tongue in cheek about it at the end of the day. It was just like, wow, like we're making fun of this, but you can actually see it happening, like playing out in front of you IRL. Yeah. For those who haven't seen the movie, it's the story of Josie and the Pussycats, this band where they get discovered by a record label with like secret subliminal messages in putting those into the music of pop stars to like control the masses and make teens buy whatever. So, yes, to make you buy yeah, things. Exactly. So the, like throughout the movie, there's so many logos and products. Um, can you guess, Jenny? I have the answer from the IMDb page. Can you guess how many uh, brands there were approximately? Ooh. Okay, throughout the okay, movie. Okay, let me do a quick run through in my brain. Of it's sort of like a guessing the jelly beans in a jar type of moment. Right. It is. I want to say, oh, I feel like it's higher than 78, but it's lower than 400. I'm going like, let's go like 297. All righty. That's your answer. Uh, now I feel like it's too low still. Do you want me to let's give you with- a warmer, colder? <laughs> Ooh, sure, if we want to play it like that. No, I'll it's like, you... just let me accept my fate. <laughs> I'll give you one hint so you can make one more guess. Okay, 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 okay. Lower. Oh, so I was going to be wrong altogether. Okay, well, sh- well then, sheesh. How about 180? Okay, let's lock it in. The answer is approximately 73 individual logos throughout the movie. So your first, your lowest guess was closest, 78. <laughs> wow it's easy to overestimate things like that though it's like how are you and you become so like i remember when i first saw this movie as a kid i didn't even really notice all of the brands until my dad like pointed it out because that it was like meant to be a joke because Mm -hmm. in real life i'm used to seeing logos everywhere so when it showed like people at the mall and then like they're like talking down at the basement of the mall and you just see mtv.com plastered Mm -hmm. between them it's like framed intentionally into each shot so that it's clearly meant to be like calling attention to itself and being like this is also an ad yes but uh, and i love their hotel rooms i feel like that was when it's like comes to its full fruition of the insanity when it's like wow each individual hotel room is like a theme of a brand (laughs) yeah which which rooms from the hotel stand out in your memory well, obviously McDonald's one because that's like one of the most ridiculous scenes in the whole movie. Um, oh my god! The, the if you're happy and, and you know it, clap your hands. Yes. <laughs> so somebody, a whistleblower in the movie, is trying to warn Josie and the bandmates of the nefarious record label, and <laughs> they write a message on the mirror in lipstick saying, "Beware of the music." And Tara Reed's character who is sort of the dizzy airhead sees it and she just draws like a heart and a smiley face on the letters. <laughs> and it's the most iconic thing. That was the first yes. movie I've ever seen Tara read. And I was like, I'm obsessed Same. with her. So good. She plays that character so well. It's like born to be it. And then she was actually, I don't know the timeline of it, but her and Carson Daly, he's in it for a brief second as himself. They ended up dating in real life. And it may or may not have been before or after. I don't know how that was written in. Um, I, I think actually that was have the IMDb. answer from yes. the IMDb page. <laughs> they met on set during his cameo right here. Oh, so they met then. And I actually thought that was... They met on set shooting uh, Josie and the Pussycats and started dating for a period of time after that. Which That's why it was funny wild. in the movie when he was like, um, I got the blonde one. And he like <laughs> instantly goes after her. Oh my I god, thought it was so funny. disturbing. That was though. one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> Actually, to think about it, once I was watching it, I was like, they're going to beat them to death with a bat. I was like, this is terrible. I'm laughing, but I don't mean to be. It's nervous. And there was one other joke that I feel like didn't age well. I'm trying to remember exactly. Um, there was one other oh, joke oh, I where remember like, that wouldn't be put in there Damon, today. It was during that exact moment where she was like, I would never date you, Carson. And then she's holding like a cardboard cutout of Matt Damon. And she's like, but you on the other hand. <laughs> it's like, the exact wrong yes, time to be watching that was definitely that. canceled <laughs> yeah i was like it's so funny how fickle pop culture is um okay so we also like to do as part of making these movies what do you think the budget of this movie was Oof, okay now i'm like maybe i should go with my lowest guess 
but I was, it had to be more than the last movie that we talked about, Nerve. I feel like it was more than that. Because low key, I saw something about like Parker Posey having difficulty with the role because she was used to doing like indies and she felt like she sold out going on to this one. But then Alan Cumming made her feel like better about it because he's kind of like the same way. So that makes me feel like it was a sellout mm-hmm. type of movie, which means in my mind, we're like a hundred million. But maybe that's not even a sellout type of price. Okay. See, hundreds so my lower the one. The answer is thirty nine million. It's goddamn it! <laughs> okay. I'm going way too high on all of these things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're fighting for the budget, you'd be like, I think we need seven hundred exactly. million. <laughs> like, that's not. We're not making a SpaceX shuttle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but then at the end the of the day, you know, we thirty nine million. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, it's still I'm more down, than nerve though, because the on. On a one hundred million dollar movie, you know the snack table is gonna be lit. It's gonna be like Welch's gummies, Gushers. The fruit snack situation on a hundred million dollar movie better be on t- on t- top of its game. I'm absolutely certain. I'm sure they're like organic things that we've never even heard of too, like some sort of whole foods you know, baby, some like Silicon yeah. Valley fresh out the uh, fresh out the pumping lines, <laughs> new type of gummy. Yes, yes. <laughs> fresh okay, out the so pumpkin guess line. how much of that budget? What? <laughs> yes, fresh out the pumpkin line. That's how you know it's the good shit. Fresh out the pumpkin line. <laughs> like, what am I saying? That's iconic. <laughs> iconic. Get me a t-shirt that says fresh out the pumpkin line. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so we've secured... The budget. Guess how much of that came from product placement? Okay, I know the answer to this, actually. It's a... Okay, go for it. (laughs) Yeah, it is a trick question. It's a trick question. Um, Nothing, right? They like... But I don't know the whole story behind that. Yes. Yeah, no no one... I think that that just basically probably means that they didn't get sued by anyone. (laughs) for showing their their logos i don't know it's like it goes both ways with that i feel like it depends on like who thinks they're getting what out of the deal if they're gonna sue you or let it fly or need to pay you or whatever yeah i thought it was very interesting that there were no brands that paid to have their product placed in the videos or in the set but then i thought about it more closely and it started to make sense like from like generally they won't put brands or anything in the movie unless it's paid to be there because they don't want to be endorsing a product for free or making an association to a product that isn't like legally agreed upon and the brand is trying to protect their thing like they don't want their brand just thrown in whatever but they also can't really stop like people from using their logo especially i think if the logo is being used according to the brand's guidelines like they're not um, they're not altering the logo in any way and they're not showing it in an unfavorable light. It's basically showing it throughout the movie in the way that you would see it in real life, like printed on packaging or on windows or on signs. So the brands can't really be like, well, you're doing something damaging to us because like, well, we're just showing your product. No one's mentioned any brand really specifically except for like MTV, like on the TV. So none of the products are being integrated into the story. So there's really no reason for the movie to have to even reach out to these brands to say like oh we're mentioning pepsi exists like the world knows pepsi exists you can't argue that we're like damaging your brand like by talking about a world-owned soda so that's where i think it comes from but i'm just speculating so Mm -hmm. it's pretty deep speculation (laughs) yeah (laughs) i guess i thought about it a lot Like, oh wow. <laughs> At one point I saw your eyes glaze over and I was like, I think we're good with the logos. <laughs> Amazing. Jenny, for this next segment, I would like to test how well you know the music to the soundtrack of Josie and the Pussycats. What do you think your score is gonna be on that? Oh my gosh. So I feel like it's gonna be in the middle because I know the general vibe of all of the songs, but do I know all of the lyrics? Questionable, probably not. Do you have, was there ever a point in your life where you were just like repeating this soundtrack, listening to it outside of the movie? 
It was more recently than I'd like to admit, honestly. It's on my shower soundtrack. <laughs> yes, such a good sour, shower, sour soundtrack. <laughs> sour soundtrack, baby. First they're salty, then they're sweet. Mm, all of my showers are pretty sour because of the BO that gets activated by the steam. I'm just kidding. Mm. What I mean, <laughs> it's life. that's life. I'm not really kidding. That's the life. That's pheromones, baby. Yeah, I soak it up. Soak it up. Soak up my sour shower. And <laughs> Ooh, now... that's a new Axe body spray now. <laughs> like, watch oh my out. God. Sour sports shower wash. <laughs> the manly spray. Yeah, you're going to make your man reek. Reek. <laughs> Okay, so for this game, we're going to play Guess the Lyrics. Um, oh, so, <laughs> sort of like the singing bee from hit television shows like Fox. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to sing the song, and then you're going to finish the last lyric when I point to you, okay? Okay. Ready? This first one is from Pretend to be Nice. Well, he looks at me with those innocent eyes and says, it looks like you're wearing some kind of disguise because your hair sticks up, your shoes are untied. And I'm tired of saying the same stupid song. Something like yeah, that. Nice. <laughs> I'm like, is this what it is? The real lyric is, I hope that you got that shirt on half price. Okay. But that was good. Maybe you later, really, she says. She had something really like that it. later. What did you say? You said something really like, similar. And I'm tired of hearing that same stupid song. In the second verse, she goes, and I'm tired of hearing his sick, stupid lies. So that's what you were thinking of. Okay, there we go. Oh my so gosh. It's I'm, definitely I'm, buried in there. This is not my forte. This is what I told you. I know the vibe. No, <laughs> I, I think I like the vibe. I want the vibe. So it's perfect. <laughs> okay. okay. This next one, I'm going to, it's more like an every other line year is going to be you. So I'm going to point oh, to great. you. <laughs> great. This great. is from, um, I can't remember the title, but you'll know it. <laughs> I'm a punk rock prom queen. Brown paper magazine. Hotter than you've ever seen. And everywhere and in between. I'm a 10 second thrill ride. Don't you want to come inside? <laughs> so that fucking part. risque. I know. They're like, this that. is a kid's movie. I was like, I counted at least 15 dirty jokes in this I know. Thing. And there's trivia on that too. But yeah, come Ooh. inside. Real fun. <laughs> Five star triple threat. Hardest of the hard to get. No one's little red Corvette. You, you just don't impress me yet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ain't seen nothing that? like me yet. But that was okay. close. It does. It does. I always thought it was that until I read these lyrics. So maybe they were wrong. Okay, yeah. one last one because this is my favorite song from the soundtrack, and I do want to know yours as well. But first, this is from Shapeshifter, which I was talking to the barista at Starbucks about this song today. Ooh, Shapeshifter, guest lister, big thinker. Don't you want to mess around with me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> she'll turn around. You'll diss her, gate crasher rehasher <laughs> she's mashing those potatoes with me <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> no if you think that's cool whatever dude <laughs> i loved that song as a kid because she says whatever dude i was like that's totally me like whatever boys like whatever dude i'm doing my own thing i got two different colored like- converses on <laughs> I feel like that was not one of the main songs in the movie. Was that like an end credits song? They played it during a montage of like, there's a few songs that they don't perform in the movie that are played like while they're shopping and like while they're fighting. So yeah, that was like a montage song. But we listened to to that soundtrack again and again. Um, When me and my sisters, we got the CD somehow, maybe it came with our DVD, I think. And we were driving through arizona like we went flew to the grand canyon and then we drove to like sedona and other parts of arizona for like cool resorts with water parks it was fun i got into this cool (laughs) educational comic book series about the grand canyon at the time (laughs) and i was like i think that i'm gonna be i think i'm gonna make a movie based on these comic books (laughs) it's like calm down nerd but oh anyway, God. I we thought you were going to say that you were going to become like a Grand Canyon paleontologist. I should. Well, <laughs> the, I think it was very telling in another way because the name of the comic book series was called Chasm. 
<laughs> which is just like a big gaping crack. So it definitely knew what was up with my gayness for sure. Wow. It's beautiful. Yeah. Poetic. Also, <laughs> we listened to the song on repeat. So the gate crasher shapeshifter one, I was like, oh, so good. Before we move on to the next segment, Jenny, I want to know what's your favorite song from the soundtrack? Okay, I don't want to hate on my girls because I love all of the Josie and the Pussycat ones songs, even though obviously I didn't know Shapeshifter that well. Um, but I think my favorite song is a du jour song, and it's Backdoor Lover. Du jour. Back to lover. It's just like how the whole movie opens. It's epic. It's They're on a fucking tarmac. They're like, come out of this private jet and do this concert. I feel like the comedy is on point with the editing during that because they're like shooting different people in the crowd. They have the like bride in the crowd, like, Marco, marry me. Just like You're they get you so right, right into it. It's so, <laughs> I, it's such a good, I'm, I would have completely forgot to even mention Du jour that you even. I'm so happy you said that because you're right. Dujour is the fictional band that goes down that allows um, Josie and the Pussycats to be discovered. Dujour catches on to the evil plan. And they're basically like an NSYNC Backstreet Boy ripoff. That beginning <laughs> is so, so perfect. It's like the jet looks exactly like that Backstreet Boys or NSYNC video. I don't remember which. But then the oh, people... I didn't even know this was a reference to something. Yeah, remember, I think it's Backstreet Boys. Remember, they're like dancing in front of the white plane. It looked very similar to that. Uh, okay, and yeah, I think now it's coming back to me. The oh girls, gosh. like, screaming at the camera was very TRL, like the beginning so of TRL. So good. No, so even it, all of the people that were, like, random extras in this, like, their faces are seared into my memory. They're iconic. Like, and when you watch it on Amazon Prime, you know how it gives you the IMDb, like, who they are? The extras are just, like, their pictures are the picture of them from this movie, because that's, like, all they did. They're, like, that's all I'm but known I, for. Like, I but wouldn't it know them names. if I saw them in a supermarket, I feel like. Totally. If they had the stickers on their face <laughs> in the right yeah. spot. The um, did it have their names? It did have their names. Yeah, they're just That's like, and awesome. it said their character's name was like laughing girl, like screaming fan. You can just go to the movie. Relatable. Like I've been, I was an extra in a movie, and you can just go to the IMDb page for that and be like, I was in that, and you can like list yourself <laughs> as being in it. And so I'm glad when people do it because, and then you can see their picture and you're like, oh my god, that is her. Um, even if it was the only thing they ever did, it's so much fun. But oh my gosh! The I'm just gonna like lie and say I was in this blonde girl in the back of that movie. Yeah, I was in Titanic. <laughs> I was <laughs> so cold. The um uh, the backdoor lover is the perfect song to open with because it's like I did not get what that was talking about when I was a kid. It just goes right. over kids' heads. But then it just makes fun of itself because it's just like it's making fun of the pop music industry right off the mm -hmm. bat. And the whole cast is like, there were a lot of people in the cast of Du Jour that were from the movie Never Been Kissed, which shared um, a director, I think. Yeah, the director was the director of Never Been Kissed. So, okay. like Donald well, and Faison. They had, yeah, from Clueless. I knew him from mm -hmm. Clueless. And Brecken yep. Meyer was in Clueless with him. Exactly. So. Yeah, a lot of crossover. Like, um, love a good crossover. Me too. So, Jenny, uh, for this next part of the production of this movie i really i need to start casting i need to find some start filling some roles namely the love interest alan m and in this next thing you're going to be auditioning for that role okay oh so i've given you the sides you just do the highlighted ones and i will do uh, the opposite i'm playing josie and you're playing alan m are you ready Okay, I'm highlights. I was low key mm -hmm. thinking as I watched this that Alan M would be today if they remade it, played by Bo Burnham. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, then you're welcome to use that as motivation. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. The director might have notes for you. So let's just jump in, okay? <clears throat> okay. Well, I'll set the scene. So, exterior uh, Josie is under the hood of Alan M's dilapidated truck while Alan M strums his guitar. <laughs> Josie, did I bust the carburetor? Overload the alternator? Jump in any time. Abuse the accelerator. Nice. You can't drive this uphill when it's hot outside, I told you. You don't deserve a truck this good. You take it totally for granted. 
I'm taking my truck for granted. She says I'm taking my truck for granted. Um, Jess, did uh, did you ever want to tell someone something, but like, you weren't sure if you like, you should, you know? Yeah. Cause like, you didn't know what their reaction might be, or if it was the right thing to do. You should tell them. You should always tell them. Because there's this guy at work, and he just reeks, you know? A guy? Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop you right here. The director just is in my ear, and they asked, (laughs) um, they think that they want to try seeing this character from a foreign country. Oh, God. (laughs) Somewhere overseas. So do you have any accents? Actually, don't don't tell me. Just let's just take it from the next line, okay? Oh, God. (laughs) And of course, that's the first line is, oh, God, anyway. <clears throat> oh, God, Josie. No, no, not, not just smelly. I'm talking like hot, wet garbage on a sunny day. I, uh, I, uh, I think that <laughs> I'm just going to switch the accent because I don't know what that was. I think there's a problem. It's not, oh, wait, I'm a man. <clears throat> this just really sent me off the rails. I'm going back. I'm going backwards. <laughs> Don't you ever can let, start, don't you can ever start let anyone tell you. You can't go back, kids. <clears throat> oh, oh, God, no, Josie, no. Not just smelly. I'm talking like hot, wet garbage on a sunny day. I think there's a problem. It's like a stadium bathroom or something. No one seems to want to say anything about it. <laughs> I know you would say something, though, right? Yeah, see, that's what I love about you. We could just talk about stuff. That's what I'm looking for. That was so cool. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I don't know why it ends with her saying, uh. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> She's like, dick in here. <laughs> she says, ah. <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> Josie. <laughs> Josie. She uh. overloaded my carburetor. <laughs> I just got a call from the studio and the creators of Josie and the Pussycat actually have some issues with a few of the jokes in this movie. For example, the backdoor lover, for example, Mm. the um, sexual references, the jokes that are perhaps, what are some other colorful jokes you remember from this? Cause I'm like, this movie feels like a kid's movie (laughs) to me now, but Um, then I was watching it. I was like, Oh yeah, I guess that's bad. It is scary that they like, seemingly murder the first band and like kidnap that goth girl like those things definitely seem dark right, to me yes, as a child very dark like, they, <laughs> I feel like they made it feel light but when you like when i'm watching it back i'm like okay this is actually very dark they're basically like, yeah, like her parents are looking to... for her <laughs> yeah and then they're basically saying that every celebrity that's ever died they killed they showed <laughs> the, they showed um Elvis it is overdose headlines and we're like we right. planned that and it's like, like that's a lot you've been here for a long time yeah uh, the government being like a secret like oppressor I don't think they would talk about that anymore because it feels too real <laughs> they would be like that's for like, sure this is definitely like an early 2000s movie <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And it came out it came out four four months before 9-11, five months before 9-11. So mm. it was a different world. Different world oh, indeed. That definitely de- definitely changes things. Yeah. That dates it in my mind. Uh-huh. So that makes sense. This was like one of the last movies that we watched like before <laughs> we had like the first major trauma like as a society, as as children. So maybe that's why it's stuck in our psyche is so long it's like a defining yeah it would have been that first it would have been that last summer vacation before 9-11 happened obviously in September of that year how sad because I we would have been driving to Arizona and doing that whole thing like the mm, August of 2001 oof oof discovering scars here on the faking of uncovering traumas You can't fake those. You cannot fake the scars. Yeah, well, this is good podcasting. Good makeup artist. You can't fake this. I can fake the scars. I would you just use my. Can. I would use my One third of the degree. Things to fake. Yeah, I've done that. 
Um, by the way, Amazing. I don't think we've mentioned yet, yet that people who are watching the video version of this can see our Josie and the Pussycat ears. We Jenny did mention real it because when oh, you introduced did. me, I was like, can't you tell? I mean, you're like, no, oh, yeah. can tell if they're listening. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Well, my ears are made out of a bubbly bounce box, which I feel is very on brand. I cut. Them. Yes, I like it literally them. looks like you bought the headphones with those. It looks so good. Thanks. I look exactly like this YouTuber called Deaf Noodles who like satirizes playing a Minecraft cat. So he has headphones with ears. So I'm like, people are going to think this is supposed to be that. But it's not. It's Josie and the Pussycats. He's his own person. I'm not copying. I promise. Now I'm just drawing <laughs> attention to it. So <laughs> no one is going to think that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know much about the internet write it in anymore. The comments, if you didn't see it. Yeah, I know how toxic you're going to be out there coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to oh. say the um, studio has some complaints about all of the sex the, and the, the romance. Stuff. Yeah. So right. their solution is in order to preserve. This is from IMDb. In order to preserve the wholesome image of Josie and the Pussycats. Archie Comics demanded there be a scene where Josie and the Pussycats were seen brushing their teeth. <laughs> do you remember You're... that scene? I do. Do you? No. The only, every time I hear teeth brushing scene, all I can think about is that scene in Bring It On with um, Kirsten Dunst and, and Jesse McCaff. Is that his name or whatever? Yeah, Metcalf, I think. I ha- I is hated that, that scene in Brigham. On- no, that's someone. That's John Tucker Must Die. Yeah, <laughs> he's a Jesse something. I think though, or something or other. But that scene in Bring It On with the teeth brushing weirds me out for some reason. It's the first scene that made me self conscious of spitting out. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, I would never <laughs> because she they're it. doing it so differently. Yeah, he just has wads. Of he's not good, face. and she's not good, <laughs> and she has no spit. Like I feel like she was just like dry. using a dry brush. She was just acting. That's why She's she was gonna doing get dry that. socket. <laughs> that a thing? You know you when you get, get your wisdom socket. teeth out? <laughs> you get your wisdom. I, I don't have wisdom teeth actually. Like you were I just born without? never. I was born without them. Like next stage evolution or something. I don't know. I had two extras that they what? had removed. Like I had a fifth wisdom tooth removed a year or so after all the first four, and then just a couple months ago in LA, I had a sixth one removed from back there because it was coming in. So I got some of yours. Yeah, you took mine. I don't know if I'm the evolutionarily advanced one or if you are. Yeah, I'm not sure. It depends on, I guess, the society. Exactly. It's like, (laughs) who's telling us we don't need these? Yeah. I I still have a baby tooth in my mouth, too. (laughs) I need all of the teeth that are extra because some of those gummy bears from Haribo are super chewy. Oh my gosh, don't eat the diet ones. You, you've you read those reviews, right? Oh my gosh, yes. Anything with artificial sugar like that is going to be, it's going to kill all the flora in your stomach. Oh my gosh. Danger. Okay, Danger. so um, here's some other fact. The brushing the teeth thing came in like the, the beginning. <laughs> it was like in the montage? Montage at the beginning where it shows the okay. girls doing good, wholesome things. Like that Clearly. must all be oh my gosh. from the comic book. Don't you think? Like it shows them working at Right, yeah. An it's like giving them backstory that means nothing later. Food. Yeah. yeah, like they were doing a food drive. And then throughout the movie, they're like, yeah, they seem like nice people, but they're never again but- like, let's donate money to the homeless you know never helping the world also in that montage in the very beginning is one of the the dirty jokes tara reed is holding a sign that's like honk if you like rainbows honk if you like peace and then it says honk if you like pussy and it's a car crash but then she moves (laughs) and it says the pussy cat and she runs off like a wacky wavy and inflatable tube that's one of the when that first happened when i first saw that movie i think is when me and my sisters were like yup this movie is fucking funny (laughs) because (laughs) Well, she runs away like that. It's exactly like in Scary Movie when um, yeah, yeah. Anna Ferris goes, I'm not crazy. <laughs> uh, that's so a good. perfect example of this movie getting dirty. And I think yes. it shows how well they balanced it so that it was like, you know, it wasn't, it's not like raunchy art, hard art comedy, but like um, it still ages with the audience somewhat. Because as a kid, mm-hmm. we loved it. And as an adult, we love it. Mm-hmm. Um, also as an adult like a few months ago I guess right before COVID like February before COVID my sister just moved to LA and they were having a screening of this at this like restaurant slash theater chain downtown Ooh. with 
Rachel Lee Cook, who plays Shut Josie, up, visiting. So we got tickets. Me and my other friends, we got ears like that. It was going to be the first thing that <gasps> Melanie and I did uh, in LA when she got there. So we showed up, drove downtown, had our ears, and they were like, we moved it to last Thursday or something. And we told everyone, but we didn't tell the people who got the tickets on Fandango. And you're the only ones who what? got the tickets on Fandango. And we were like, so it oh. already happened. And now that we're just hurts here. my heart. So we had to watch the uh, parasite which like most of them had already <laughs> such seen an opposite, like... i know it was such a disappointment i mean it was one of those things where i was like well i'm an adult so i'm not gonna like pout over this but it definitely i'm pissed <laughs> and they <laughs> um but they gave us our ticket for free so whatever whatever i don't even uh, remember the name of that chain so gosh. they can they can rot they can rot hopefully yeah. they didn't make it through covid i'm just kidding no free advertising for you chain Mm-mm, not you chain your friend <laughs> you're an independent franchisee and i hate you <laughs> tell the fandango people we're equal to so this is another imdb theme due to the level of profanity and adult themes the family-friendly archie comics which published the original Josie and the Pussycat stories, would denounce the film and discourage people from seeing it. Oh my gosh. Strangely, many years later, the comics would not only be fine with, but also promote the television series Riverdale based on their Archie series, and which features Josie, Melody, and Valerie as secondary characters, which arguably had much darker adult themes in its storylines in this movie. Again, that's right from IMDb. Well, joke's on you, studio, because the only reason I would want to watch Riverdale is for the Josie and the Pussycat characters. I didn't know they were on it, and now I kind of want to see who plays them. Yeah, like, I'm interested in that, especially if they do music. Like, if they have a music scene, then obviously that's the only thing I'm going to look up on YouTube. And they need to, yeah, I'm not, I don't care about Riverdale. How else am I going to know Archie Comics from the rappers on Bazooka Gum? Like, that's the (laughs) only reason I knew stupid archie anyway so the fact that they denounced this film makes me mad and i bet you they don't i bet you they don't anymore because they did like a 16th anniversary thing where i think a lot of this commentary comes from um but hopefully they're embracing it now i mean you'd think i mean how much did it make back so those budget was 39 what did it what did it gross that's a very good question and we're gonna get there but while we're talking about (laughs) the budget I just want to first come back to the fact that none of the money came from um, the product placement. Do you think that that's fair to brands? Um, yeah, fuck them. Those are huge brands. <laughs> okay. My gosh. I'm glad you feel that way because we're about to have a phone call where you're um, the producer who's like just putting these logos in and I'm a brand owner who really wants to get my stuff in there, but you're, you're not going to let me. So. Bring, bring. Um, hello. Hi. Hi. This is, uh, Roger Stanner from a small business here in the local Florida area. Are oh. you, do you work for the movie studio? Uh, yes, this is, uh, Betsy. Um, Stillhead? (laughs) Betsy Stillhead, yes. I found your number in my Rolodex that I stole from somebody. So I was so excited to get in contact with you. I hear you're producing a movie based on the iconic characters featured in the Archie comics. Is that true? Yeah, you seem to know a lot about me. I'm getting actually a little nervous. (laughs) Listen, don't worry about that, Betsy, okay? I... Nothing I've done is illegal so far. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you're from Florida. That's already a red flag for me. Yeah. It's hot over here. There are big crickets. But what can you do? Here's um. the deal. <laughs> Betsy. <laughs> We're not here to talk about the crickets in Florida, and you know it. Okay? No. I have a product that I'm here the to talk is- about the crickets in Florida, actually. <laughs> well, that's perfect, Imagine. because I'm selling a product that I think the world needs to see. And I think that your movie would be the perfect place to introduce my product to the world. What do you say? Paid partnership? Oof. So... Meaning you pay me to put the product in the movie is what I'm, is the oh! deal I'm proposing. We're not looking for small brands here. We're looking for big cojones, if you know what I'm talking about. Well, um, what's a big I... cojona brand to you? Well, so a big cojona brand is something that, like, you know... Um, 
it's it hurts you to look at. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it makes you you can smell it. Like I'm just thinking about Golden Arches right now, and I can smell the French fries. Like that's a big brand. That's perfect because we've gotten the feedback many times from people that when they see our logo, they become sick. So it sounds like uh. we're working in the same vein. We don't. We might not be McDonald's. But we are a disgusting business, and you do You are poisoning the masses, in a way. So you are similar to McDonald's. Do you want to hear what our product is? Um, I I mean, at this point, you had me on the phone this long. I'm I'm curious. What's it do with the crickets? Well, first of all, tell me a little bit more about yourself. What's your favorite color? Oh, um, mahogany. So these are mahogany crickets just so happens and we've trained them what's your favorite sport Ooh, uh, um curling we've trained these mahogany crickets to curl and they're on their way to the olympics so our product is actually a network of tutoring centers where people can bring it's sort of like Komen learning centers except for cricket training so families and friends whoever politicians celebrity endorsers like Josie and the Pussycats, they come by our centers with their pet crickets. You, They have to bring their own. I suggest the garden or like looking in the grass, but they bring the crickets and we train them to curl. Also, we, we like kind of paint them mahogany to like match the colors. So what do you think? <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See the idea, it does trigger a lot of nausea for a lot of people. Uh, and that's normal because crickets, the sound, the way they crunch when you eat them, it's, it's a lot, but you said you love it. So what do you think? we we got a deal. We got our cricket. Um, well, what's your, fa- what, what's your favorite sounding word? Favorite sound? I really like pumpernickel. So our business is called lumpernickel cricket training. <laughs> What would, what do you say about getting that Lumpernickel logo in the background of some of these Josie and the Pussycat scenes? Lumpernickel Cricket has such a ring to it, not gonna lie. I like the way my mouth goes up and down when I say it. It's a roller coaster of a word, but um, you'll have to pay that. us to be in here. We can right. maybe, maybe put you on the back of something. Like Name a- your price. <laughs> Name your price, but don't go over, like, three boxes of crickets. Uh yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna go over three boxes of crickets. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go with just the three. <laughs> you got it. You got it, Betsy. It's been such a pleasure working with you. I think this is gonna be an amazing partnership. And uh, don't forget to bring your cricket family by someday, and we're excited to teach them how to curl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Betsy still had signing out. <laughs> Betsy Stillhead, it's been great. Bye 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 bye. I forgot your name, Bill Stringwater. I think something, yeah, said ham. It's like Roger. Stedham. Roger Stedham or something like that. Stedham. Don't worry about it. I'll send you the invoice and it'll have my info there. Bye, Betsy. Perfect. I'll see it in your Gmail. Click. My people signed. Okay, bye. Oops. <laughs> He would hang up on her. <laughs> yeah, he was done. He got the deal. He's she's out. Like, she's trying to get in the information, <laughs> trying to like figure out where to sh- tell him the address. She's and like, he's like, oh, hi. <laughs> we got crickets. Oh my God. I also, think we he's a really know. good negotiator. He is. Where I'm just really bad at saying no to people. Yeah, um, you're getting fired. <laughs> um,. It should be noted, I am from Florida, so no offense oh, yeah. to Florida. <laughs> so I knew that, that when flag. you said it, so that's why. It's a red flag, for sure, speaking I knew as it was a red okay. flag herself. <laughs> no, Florida has n- a really good reputation in the United States. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the center. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so my God. Fun. So cute. <laughs> um, okay, Ep- so. Epcot's the epicenter. <laughs> the, yeah, the Delta variant lives within the orb in Epcot. <laughs> It's a big um, incubator. Oh my god. I would not doubt it. We're getting sued by Disney now, though. Never. That's the one brand they probably couldn't put in there without getting sued if they tried to put fucking Disney in there. Yeah, I think think they they drew the line at any movie (laughs) studios. They were like, if it's not part of the movie studio that we are, we don't need to show that. Um, Also, the 
I do not need Disney on my ass. Like every other review I do is a Disney Channel movie. So we love Disney. We and love Epcot. them. Oh my God. Their, their Epcot orb is filled with pure, fresh Clorox bleach. <laughs> and that hand calls. sanitizer that smells like tequila. Yes, it's just magic glitter hand sanitizer for your children. <laughs> and it's safe. Jenny, it's time to talk. The movie has been made. We produced it. We cast it. We got some calls from the studio on the way, but now it's time for the premiere and um, the worldwide gross of this movie. Ooh, I'm wondering, do you this? think, do you, based on how big of a movie this is to us in our lives, mm. do you think that this was a financial success or more of a flop? Meaning, did think, they make their budget back plus right. some? I think they have now made their budget back plus some, but I think initially it was probably like a slowish rise. Okay. But so also if- the fact that I had the DVD not knowing anything about any of this makes me think maybe it was actually a hit. Mm-hmm. But so, um, why don't initially you- I want to say like like opening weekend how much I think it made. Yeah, sure. <laughs> or like what per- so like what percentage of your budget do you think it made back? And okay. it's opening weekend. Opening weekend, I think it maybe made back like the budget was thirty nine. I don't know, like twenty percent or something. Okay, so they made uh, the worldwide gross. So not even just the opening weekend, but pretty much the world. The it's like the worldwide gross was fourteen million eight hundred sixty six thousand. So fourteen point eight oh. out of thirty nine. Um, okay, I'm not sure the math on that. <laughs> let me ask Siri. <laughs> but I'm gonna be like, that's what's what I was 14. thinking. What's fourteen point eight divided by thirty nine? So it made back thirty eight percent of its budget. Ooh, okay, that's I a was... flop. <laughs> I was like, you go, Josie, you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to me that's not so much. great. Because you know, thirty eight percent of its budget. Well, but then eventually, it's like it was. It's yes. a cult classic. It's like you know yeah. those types of movies. It's not like a blockbuster. It's like a. It's a, meant to be a cult classic. I think. I don't it know. It was a cult classic for sure. I think they wanted it to be a financial hit. Probably like don't they well, probably would have done everyone s- here. <laughs> right. <What>? <laughs> they probably w- <laughs> they probably wanted more money or like their budget back. Usually like that's how you know if a movie doesn't make its budget back, there is no sequel, there is no continuation of that property like who knows if this had made 100 million in its first weekend then or at least made its budget back then maybe they would have done a sequel or like continued this franchise like done a teen PG-13 um, adult comedies based on the Archie properties. Like that would have mm-hmm. been interesting and gotten other Archie people the same way Riverdale now does, which I've never seen, but I guess the kids love it. I guess so. I don't get it. Gen Gen Z and millennials. Like I feel like our Riverdale was out when we, I was in college, when we were in college and now it still is. But I, I don't, don't even know when it came out. I feel like I completely like missed this whole radar thing. And yeah, I, I it, just like in the past four years was like, because I used to teach high school kids and they would always talk about it. I was like, what the heck? <clears throat> so you know? what? Yeah, I'm, I have a lot of curiosities about that. But I also have other questions <laughs> about, about the movie. Me into a school now. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of questions <laughs> about you teaching kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, what questions do you have lingering from this movie? Okay, so first question, what does du jour mean to you? Because throughout the movie, they said du jour means <laughs> friendship, hygiene, seatbelts, family, teamwork, and crash positions. Yes, what does du, du jour, jour mean to you? It was so good. <laughs> um, to me, du jour, I think du jour means family. <laughs> <laughs> I think they already said that, but I feel like I related most to that one because... I felt like I, when I think of the band du jour, I think of them being funny and on that plane and care. And like when they made up for each with their fight after at the beginning, mm-hmm. they would seem like really close friends. And I was like, Oh, they remind me of like K-pop idols where they're just sort of like thrown together to like produce content. But you know, they're having this once in a lifetime experience together. I'm over intellectualizing it. <laughs> <laughs> so do you know what I I love it. It took you there. You know, yeah. that's what family's all think. about. Yeah. It's going <laughs> deep in 
into your mind. What does it mean mind. to you? Um, to me, I feel like it's none of those things that they said, though it's all of those things. Du jour is like, um, like this, it's like the universe. It's like the all encompassing, like nature of mankind and mm -hmm. it's genius and it's, it's potential <laughs> it's possibilities yeah. and it's, you know, the, the ability for people to create such beautiful things like music and art, but then also to like use it for such like things as buying and, and, you know, selling stuff. And wow. It's that's all of really that. nice. <laughs> yeah. Like they stand for, the idea that like art can be commercial and still be valid. Hmm. Did I make that up? Did I, is that not what you're saying? <laughs> no, I didn't even think of it that way. I'm like, okay, yes, du jour means like the paradox of it all. Du jour is the oh, paradox sure. of it all. Like du jour is the oxymoron. Or mm -hmm. <laughs> and I also love, that's very well said. And I also love the, like, I didn't get this layer until I was much older. Du jour, meaning of the day, like soup du jour. Mm, so like mm -hmm. they're the band du jour because they're mm -hmm. literally in one day yes. and out the next exactly you just pick them um, up i loved that when they died it was like or not died but whatever went missing it was like 2000 to 2001 on the tv screen yeah. and i also noticed a hilarious joke on that like so mtv news comes on and the lady is like du jour has uh gone missing and we're not sure if there are any survivors the record company has yet to release a statement, although there is a commemorative box set being released tomorrow <laughs> commemorating the entire life and career of Du Jour. It's like they before they even have a statement, they have a box set ready to go out commemorating their lives. I was like, I didn't get that at first, but that's so funny. true. Um, yeah, it was funny in like a funny because it's true type of way. Yeah, exactly. Like, like CNN, <laughs> CNN really has like the um, obituary videos ready to go for like all the presidents. Yeah. Oh my God. They're like, the minute they turn 50, you make that real. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was my other thing? I had a couple other things. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was your, this wasn't the IMDb. Sorry. I peeped a little at some of the IMDb's when I was trying to figure out what movie to do. And no problem. this one was saying when Carson Daly and Tara Reid met, they were like, Oh, I'm a Scorpio. I'm a cancer. And like, they were saying they're real Zodiac signs or whatever. Um, which led me to think like, what, who is your big three Josie and the Pussycats characters. And if you don't know, like that's the thing that the kids do on TikTok where it's like your big three is your sun, moon, and your rising. And I think my big three is I'm a Fiona sun. That's Parker Posey. I'm a Val moon. That's Rosario Dawson. And I'm a Mel rising. That's Tara Reed. And I can completely explain that, but like, hopefully I don't need to. I feel like, you know. No, no, I get it. <laughs> it feels right oh and then i'm an yeah. alan m venus i was just like as i was watching it i was like he's my venus I feel like your venus is like your love one i'm like i'm an alan m venus okay <laughs> let me make sure that i am uncertain understanding all the signs right so the the what's the first one the so sun is so like my son is like the main one like i'm a taurus right you just hmm? right 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 so it's okay. like yeah you're you're the one that I relate to most is right I or think, like your like overarching identity. I really feel Josie. It's main Love character it. syndrome. Main character <laughs> syndrome. Love it. Um okay. like Leo vibes. Um okay, Moon is like your like secret, like sort of the when your mask is off, like who you are behind closed doors. Valerie, definitely. Okay, we're both. Oh, that's why we're friends because we're Yay. both a Valerie Moon. <laughs> Vulnerable and honest. Nice. Yes, I love it. Um, and yeah, like, but also like willing to like has a tough side that she's like, I'll fight for my friendships and like fuck this. Fair and, and just. Yeah. Yes, like she's like has a fire underneath her a little bit too. Like she can be sensitive, but she can also be like protective. Yeah. Yes. Um, and and, and then, like knows when to cut people off, knows when something's toxic to be like, you've changed. Right, right. Yes, she like looks out for herself still as much as she loves other people. She feels like she also tries to love herself the same. Yeah. Um, 
Also, The Rising is, I guess, I, I mean, I don't know enough about astrology. I feel it's like, like it's just like funny. Up, like sort but of yeah, that it's like, too. I've seen things that say like, oh, maybe in your next life, mm-hmm. you will okay. be this sign. Yeah, it's like you're like. I think um, <laughs> I think I'm a Fiona Rising yes. where it's like, it's like I'm learning how to really yeah, like, I feel like I'm an old soul who's lived a lot of lives. So eventually I'm going to be like so power hungry and manipulative the master of it all yeah yeah but not like in a really i would never beat someone to death with a bat type of way i think because i'll always have too much valerie and josie right i have that determination to be like the system is what it is i'm going to try to succeed in it Mm -hmm. well and her whole like motivation at the end of it all is kind of like still Mm -hmm. like it's like her inner child is what's guiding her which i think is like a a cute sort of thing in a weird way but it's like definitely to be in touch with your inner child i think is a thing to be celebrated depending on how long you stay in touch with it (laughs) yeah i think you're right there's also this redemption with her where it's like oh she's this way because she was hurt as a young person and i think that's relatable it's like we all have to heal from our traumas to make sure they don't ruin Mm -hmm. her relationship ruin those relationships baby um okay so if you were a reviewer jenny what would you rate this movie and you get to choose the rating system Ooh, ooh! i feel like we have to rate it cat ears for yes. this one and i give it a stadium full of cat ears and also some cat ears at home and carson daly bought two <laughs> I don't know if you remember that part, but he's like, you got to get your cat ears. I know I got two of them. It's yeah. Like, he's like, I know I bought two. I was like, why? <laughs> so funny. And he's all like beat That's up. Perfect. So a stadium full of cat ears plus some at home plus two. Plus some at home cat ears. <laughs> I would rate it. I'm going to rate it nine out of seven pussy cats. No, wait. <laughs> nine out of seven. Nine out of ten. That. <laughs> what happened there <laughs> off the charts these cats yeah. having babies <laughs> i've decided i don't even want my rating system to make sense <laughs> no um nine out of eight and a half out of ten pussy cats just because i feel like there was one or two outdated jokes in there that i was like oh they could probably revise but, but i would that's be so also... mad if they made a, a remake of this no, i feel like please i don't. would be very yeah. upset it's like it's it's in, I'd like the way that it's dated. I, I wrote down some other things that are like, oh, this is funny that they said what? Mr. Movie Phone being the subliminal message voice. I was like, do so kids good. even know what Mr. Movie Phone is anymore? They must <laughs> not. But I love when they're like, we found out subliminal messaging works better in movies. Dressing the Pussycats is the best movie ever. Oh, yeah. Join the army. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It says underneath it. So good. I love sight gags like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another one that they were like, um, when he was trying to sign them or something and they're like, oh yes, it says that like bands that have and do better, whatever, whatever. He's like, what about, they'd make some joke about the beastie boys and they're like, but they're huge stars. It's like, well, yeah. I don't know where they've been for a couple of years. Yeah. The beastie boys being huge stars. I remember just yesterday being like, <laughs> I mean, okay were they that big in 2001 i guess i was like that can't be the the band that they're selecting for this I, they were definitely not the biggest it would have been hilarious yeah. if they chose like nickelback because they yeah. were really big in 2001 yeah and it would be such a funny meme a joke some of the meme. things they predicted did age well like they were like there was a thing where it was like a headline and it said Barry Moore, Diaz, and Lou set to play yes. Josie and the girls in a movie. And it's like, that was wow. They shot that before uh, Charlie's Angels came out. So it was like basically predicting oh, wow. Charlie's Angels. So like, I and the editor was the same. The editor of Charlie's Angels oh. did Josie and the Pussycat. Oh my so gosh, he was like inside putting information. In IMDB, baby. He was putting a <laughs> um, Easter egg into one of his other movies he was working on at the time. And I just thought it was perfect because it's like, we know those three names are iconic as Charlie's Angels, so mm-hmm. the mo- the joke ages forever because you're like, oh, it's like Charlie's Angels are going to play the Pussycat Yeah. Pussycat I low-key probably would actually watch that remake with them playing oh, yeah. them. 
I'm like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, I spoke too soon. If the movie world kept true to itself and was like, did that, right. that would be sick. And you don't see a lot of sequels that do that, where it's like they do like like a spin off movie in a way, where it's like, yeah. oh, let's just dive into like this television show that was in the middle of like this other thing that we were watching. Yeah, I want to, I want like better versions of things, not gender swapped versions of it or like. CW mm-hmm. versions of it, like they're doing the Powerpuff Girls. I'm like, just make it a better oh, movie. The worst outfits ever. It's like you oh, had yeah. such an opportunity to make that. this. Like, cool. okay, thank God. What the internet was like, we're not okay with this. They said that something came out on entertainment. So people who don't know, there were like these set photos from the Powerpuff Girls CW show pilot that was shooting, and they looked like Halloween costumes. And everyone was reading them on Twitter, but they've since come out and said we reshot the whole pilot. It was not working. <laughs> <laughs> we rewrote it because it was dumb. So who knows what we're going to see, if ever. Oh my gosh. Was there anything else from the movie that lingered in your mind? Let's see. Okay, one thing I thought was super weird was Carson Daly was like the first name in the credits. Did you notice that? Oh, no. What's it that was like, about? It was like producer, like second unit or something. And then it was like Carson Daly and the other guy that was playing fake Carson Harry Daly. Spears. And then it had, and then it said cast and had the rest of the cast. It was like, what? <laughs> oh, maybe like, cause they were cameos. Like cause they maybe MTV, <laughs> maybe this was like MTV studios. And they like gave those parts. Cause Aerie Spears was from mad mm-hmm. TV. And I think that was Viacom as well. And Carson Daly's mm-hmm. obviously royalty at Viacom. So maybe they were just like guest star. So we, you get, the guest star billing yes, like you're not a part of the main build, cast you're, right okay that makes that's sense. weird though it's hollywood has so weird strange. stuff like that yeah um, but it, like i bet you it's something weird like that where it's like you're not a union cast member you're playing yourself so it's like a featured role or something <sighs> love it oh, another thing that i thought was insane was for the longest time i've had this little tune stuck in my head and i couldn't figure out where it was from and i was like always searching on the internet like news opening tune cuz the tune was like do 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 and then i watched this and that's what they do in the beginning scene it's like their <laughs> weird like little <laughs> yes i was like that's where that sound is from it's so catchy <laughs> that little <laughs> riff <laughs> <laughs> and he's like am i doing your face it's such a good face i would hate to be doing yeah, your I'm face like, like that old thing i'm gonna get a new face in the blue face yeah. he's like you know my mom is dead <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, i love the bloopers uh, i was so like good. this movie looks fun uh, i know that's a- I feel like all movies, it's like, just put the bloopers at the end. I just, it warms my heart seeing people have mm-hmm. fun. I want yeah. to have fun. I want to laugh. <laughs> Thank and you. when I watch these bloopers, I'm always thinking how it's like, that's like a couple funny moments throughout a 12 hour day of boring shit. Right, so exactly. It makes me laugh because it's like when they show the bloopers at the cast party, when you work on a movie, it's always like so funny because it's like, ah, oh, we did have fun. Even yeah, you need was, to remind like, my yourself. Legs were tired the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> All those wrinkles were worth it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, that's what I love about Jenny, by the way, has another, is someone who I've brought on to set when I was like working as a makeup artist. I'd be like, Jenny, be my assistant. And we would go to shoot. And Jenny's worked as a PA on big movies with big names as well. Mm. So she shared yes. my love of behind the scenes content, which is why I'm so glad mm. that you were my inaugural guest here on the faking of. Mm-mm-mm. And now, you know, I'm, uh, we made a web series and making another web series. Tell me where we can so, find all of that. Um, the most recent one is called call center. It's on Vimeo, but it's probably easier to go like through the Instagram, which is at call center series. And, and I'll put links in the description to this YouTube video. Right. And then MaxiPad Productions is our like silly little comedy awesome. thingy. Who knows? Perfect. Who knows? Genesis and where can I we... don't know what. <laughs> yeah. Where can we follow you? Um, On the internet, on Instagram, wherever. Uh, Jenny Say What on Instagram or Jenny Say Qua. I've had such a blast getting into the behind the scenes goodness of this classic movie. Thank you for picking the best movie you could have possibly picked. I had so much fun watching this and then reliving it with you. It's so good. It literally cured my hangover today watching this. I was like, this movie is like a warm blanket. 
on a cold rainy day <laughs> uh it did that for me too yesterday when i was watching it i was like this i thought i was gonna like not like watching this but i'm i was like dancing around with the numbers to it I so i rocked out so fucking hard like i was like head banging singing the song yes yeah. It was but emotional. I obviously didn't know the lyrics too. <laughs> Needed the yeah, subtitles. Yeah, you weren't singing them that well, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the performance was there, okay? Yeah, the vibe is right. The vibe was there. <laughs> Jenny, thank you so much for being my guest. I love you so much. We have Yay. to have you back on very soon to keep exploring other movies from your life. Oh yeah, let's get inside my brain. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to The Faking Of. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to let others know that you love this podcast. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week. 